going folks, Jack Miller here, the incredibly underqualified punk historian, and today we are here to discuss something that's not so upbeat, not so positive, the recently infamous anti-flag situation that's been kind of circulating the internet over the past couple of weeks. Now, if you're not already familiar, the band abruptly announced a breakup online and deleted all their social media, including the members' or individual social media accounts, and it would later be revealed that this was in response to some pretty serious allegations towards lead vocalist Justin Sane that came out on the Enough podcast from a woman named Christina Cerati. Christina would not address Justin by name on the podcast, but with some of the descriptions she provided and the simultaneous breakup of Anti-Flag, it didn't take people too long to connect the dots. Now, I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty details of what happened here, but if you want to listen to the podcast, I've provided YouTube and Spotify links in the description below, but do approach with caution if you are sensitive to some of these more graphic descriptions of things like domestic violence and abuse. But to give you a rough idea of what happened, let me read some of this article here. During the podcast, Sarati detailed her alleged experiences with the singer, recounting a series of events that started with a moment of shared singing at a concert and led to a horrifying night of sexual assault. Her description of the alleged assault is a harrowing narrative of fear and violation in stark contrast contrast with the socially conscious image the band is projected. The band would also respond with some statements of their own, including one from Justin himself. Recently, there have been claims of sexual assault made against me, and I can tell you that these stories are categorically false. I have never engaged in a sexual relationship that was not consensual, nor have I ever been approached by a woman after a sexual encounter and been told that I had in any way acted without her consent or violated her. Now that I have had a few days to absorb the initial shock, I am making the statement to set the record straight. Sexual assault is real and has a devastating impact on victims. I have devoted my entire life to standing up for these victims as well as those suffering from oppression and inequality who are victimized, demeaned, and abused. I have always been and always will be that person. These statements being told about me are the antithesis of what I believe and how I have conducted myself throughout my life. And if you want to see the rest of these articles, you can find both of them in the description as well. As far as Justin's statement goes, though, it definitely seems a little bit thin and generic and was likely something advised by a legal counsel of some sort, and that certainly makes sense for him to seek that out in this situation, but it doesn't offer any counter arguments and doesn't really do anything to prove him innocent. For what it's worth, there was also a fair amount of shit talking on stage from Fat Mike when I attended the final Punkin' Drublick this last weekend, and I have to say that doesn't really help his case either. So then, of course, the next thing we have to discuss is, well, what does this mean for anti-flag? And there was a little bit of a denial phase at first. I think that's very common when something like this happens. People are very hesitant to let go of their favorite records, their favorite bands, their favorite show memories. Things also felt pretty random and scattered at first. It was just all of a sudden anti-flag breaks up and, oh, something was said on this relatively obscure podcast. But once everything was out in the open, things crumbled pretty fast, and I think it seemed pretty obvious what happened, knowing what we do now, and the band just deleting all their social media out of the blue. And people were pretty quick to express distaste, and I think rightfully so. There's, of course, going to be a few people that are going to cling to those favorite records of theirs, cling to those memories with Anti-Flag, or maybe have an easier time separating the art from the artist, but for the most part, at least from what I've seen, Scene, in circles I'm in and things I see online and here in person, people were pretty quick to turn on anti-flag. And in a lot of ways, this kind of reflects the situation of what happened with Sturgeon and Leftover Crack, but with even more pushback. And I, for one, can think of a number of reasons why. So for one, anti-flag have kind of posed as the all-knowing of right and wrong in political punk for the past 30 some odd years or so. And having built a fan base and a foundation on such progressive values and this really people-first mentality, you're naturally going to have a little bit of backlash when you do something that contradicts that to an extent, and especially so in a situation like this where the actions are so despicable and so hypocritical, and I can't say I blame a lot of anti-flag fans for 
feeling betrayed by this. And as someone who was an anti-flag fan for over a decade, I feel a little bit betrayed by this too. And to compare this to the Leftover Crack situation from a few years ago again, that band was certainly progressive in their own right to an extent, but they also didn't portray themselves as the epitome of forward-thinking punk like Anti-Flag has, and they were also pretty famous for some not-so-stand-up behavior. And it was probably a little easier for people to fall back on the excuse of, oh, well, what did you expect from a band who wrote songs about doing heroin and shoplifting? And that, of course, does not justify the situation at all, and I think any rational person understands that buying and using drugs like that or shoplifting are very, very different crimes than things like domestic abuse and rape and murder. On the other hand, though, anti-flag absolutely have done everything in their power to make themselves seem like the progressive saints of punk rock, and this is kind of a perfect example of a predator camouflaging themselves in a supposed safe environment. And another thing is, like I keep saying, people in the past have been very hesitant to let go of some of their favorite records or favorite bands when things like this happen, and for as much as we like to think we're better than this in the punk scene, these sorts of things absolutely still can happen here. But now that this has happened more than once, with a couple of pretty noteworthy figures in the punk scene being reasonably obviously outed as abusers, I think people have come around more to the fact that it is kind of reasonable to deplatform these people as much as we can. Of course, there's going to be those who want to hold on to things or can look past the art versus the artist thing, but from what I've seen, it has been mostly a pretty negative reaction to this, and understandably so. But with everything that's up in the air right now, I don't think anyone would be wrong to assume that this is probably going to be the end for Anti-Flag, especially with this whole social media blackout thing that seems like a pretty blatant admission of guilt on Justin's part. Not to mention the statement he issued, like I said, is pretty passive and thin, and it was likely just advised by the legal counseling and doesn't offer any counter-arguments to what was said about him in the podcast. Not to mention the comments from Fat Mike at Punk and Drublick don't paint things in his favor either. At one point, Mike even said, fuck you, Justin, on stage at the audience, and quoted some things from the podcast, which I can understand why he might, having invested so much time and money into Anti-Flag over the years. But anyways, I think that about sums up my thoughts on the whole Anti-Flag situation. Be sure to let me know what you think, especially if you get a chance to check out the podcast and those articles. Also, before I go, I'd like to let you all know that Diesel Boy will be heading out on our European tour at the beginning of next month, so my next main video will probably be a little on the slower side in terms of release, but I think you all will really like it, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what you think. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.